As the human race has grown and evolved, it feels a little bit like we've left some of our building skills in the distant past. All the major tower blocks and office buildings we see today have broadly similar designs, but our ancestors built incredible megalithic structures which are as beautiful as they are complex. We couldn't build some of these megaliths today if we tried. Join us for a world tour of truly monumental ancient sites. When we think of South America, the greatest civilizations we tend to think of are the Aztecs and the Mayans. There's no denying that amazing architecture resulted from both of them. But the most remarkable ancient structure to be found in South America predates both of them. We can't even say for sure who built Pumapunku, which can be found close to Tiwanaku in Bolivia. The Incas used it extensively and revered it as the cradle of all human life. But tests have proven that the site predates even them. Pumapunku is an architectural marvel. The stones are carved with perfect precision and fit together perfectly. And yet there isn't a chisel or tool mark to be seen on any of them. There are even holes in the rock to drain off water, which are smooth enough to have been drilled. But there were no drills that we know of 3,000 years ago. Pumapunku has lasted so long because it was perfectly put together. But we may never know who by. Close to Asuka Historical Park in Japan, we have another megalith which defies explanation. There are many megaliths inside the historical park, but you have to travel just over 60 miles away from it to find Ishi no Hoden. Still partially attached to the gigantic boulder it was carved from, Ishi no Hoden is 18 feet high, 20 feet wide, and 23 feet thick. The total volume of this giant carved stone is somewhere between 500 and 600 tons. It's a real heavyweight contender. We don't know what the original intended purpose of Ishi no Hoden was. It appears to have been left in an unfinished state and forgotten about by whoever carved it. There's a Shinto temple right next to it, but the temple came after the rock. It was put there because people believe the rock to be holy. Beneath the rock is an artificial reservoir which collects water, and people who live locally claim it never runs dry. The water produces an optical illusion, which gives Ishi no Hoden the appearance of floating above the ground. Some discoveries force historians to look again at their beliefs and reconsider everything they once thought to be true. Gobekli Tepe in Turkey is one of them. It was already considered to be an important historic site when a team of German experts paid it a visit in 1994 and proved it was far older than anyone previously imagined. Gobekli Tepe is over 11,000 years old and was therefore built by people who we currently think of as primitive hunter-gatherers with little consideration for architecture. We can't begin to imagine what the site was used for, but the presence of carved impressions of animals and stone circles may be an indication that it was spiritually or religiously important. If that's the case, it would make Gobekli Tepe the oldest religious monument on the planet. Someone also tried to hide it on purpose. About 8,000 years ago, the entire site was buried under soil and then left for thousands of years before being rediscovered. Stonehenge in England should need no introduction to anybody. But how many of you are aware that Armenia has a Stonehenge of its very own, known as Karahunj, which roughly translates as speaking stones. The site got its name because the stones whistle during high winds. This is an intentional feature, designed by the people who built it by boring angled holes into the rock. There are more than 200 ancient stones in the site, including some burial tombs called cysts. At their largest, the stones can be 10 feet tall and weigh 10 tons each. Because of the carefully placed holes in 80 of the stones, some archaeologists believe that the stones represent an early form of an observatory, with the holes used to track the positions of stars in the sky. Some of them appear to be perfectly lined up to watch sunrise and sunset, too. Not everybody agrees, though. In the year 2000, German archaeologists conducted a detailed study and concluded that it's an enormous necropolis and was mostly in use during the Late Bronze Age with the standing stones being all that remains of an old defense wall. 
Trying to shed light on why a historical site was built or what it was used for is all part of the fun for an archaeologist. Ultimately, all they can do is make a best guess and back it up with whatever justification they can find. There are sites which don't even provide enough information for an educated guess, though, such as the Karnak Stones in Brittany, France. The site of the Karnak Stones is enormous, and the total count of stones involved is more than 4,000. They've been carefully assembled into lines, standing 12 feet tall at their highest and 3 feet at their smallest. Testing carried out at the site suggests that they've been in situ for something like 6,000 years. Without a scientific explanation, supernatural tales about Karnak are rife. Some say that the great wizard Merlin once came here and used his powers of sorcery to turn an entire Roman legion to stone. Others say that the ancient Pope Cornelius demonstrated his God-given powers by petrifying a gathering of pagans. As for their real purpose, if we don't know now, we probably never will. We're staying in Brittany for a moment because that's where you'll find the mysterious island of Gavrinus, and on it the Gavrinus tomb which is laden with art and megaliths which have been entertaining and baffling experts for years. It's an outcrop of granite which can be seen for miles around. Within it is a passage grave, an early form of ceremonial burial which is considered to be one of the most important of its type in the world. If we went back in time 5,500 years to when the tomb was built, we'd see that the island was still attached to mainland Brittany. The fact it's since been cut adrift may partially explain why it's so well preserved. Although the first excavation work at Gavrinus took place in 1835, experts still don't believe they've seen all of it. There's more digging planned for the future. Because it has a vast, dolmen-style chamber at its heart, it's thought whoever built it was also responsible for similar structures we can see as far apart as Ireland and the Iberian Peninsula. Speaking of Ireland, there's another important megalith there which currently has historians scratching their heads, and it's called Caromore. Ireland is full of ancient barrows, and the archaeologists who discovered Caromore in Sligo thought they were digging out another one, until they noticed that the design wasn't consistent with anything they'd ever seen before. Caro Moor was clearly a very significant historical site to our ancestors for thousands of years. There are tombs at the location which are more than 5,000 years old. But this megalith is something different and new. It looks almost as if it's a stage of some kind. There's a trench dug around a circular mount large enough for people to stand in and look up at whatever happened on the mound. The mound is topped by a thick, flat stone circle, but below the stone, there are strong traces of charcoal in the soil. Whatever happened on that stage, it involved fire, but anything beyond that is just guesswork. If we said the words, flying reindeer to you, the first thing that would probably pop into your head is Santa Claus. Santa and his flying reindeer are a comparatively modern invention, though. You can find depictions of reindeer in the sky at a far earlier point in history. We just don't know why. So-called deer stones are scattered all over the grasslands of Mongolia, with some of them found a little further away in Siberia. There could be miles between them, but when they do appear, the 15-foot-tall stones are usually clustered together in tight groups, close to burial mounds. Although we don't truly understand them, we believe them to be the work of nomadic Bronze Age tribes, who once roamed freely around this area more than 3,000 years ago. The older stones have basic cartoonish reindeer carvings on them, while the more recent ones show an improvement in the quality of the artwork. The later reindeer are accompanied by images of the sun, which might imply a connection with shamanistic practices in Siberia, within which both reindeer and the sun were sacred. When scientific evidence or explanation isn't available, wild speculation steps in. In the case of the strange statues that can be found in Indonesia's Bada Valley, that speculation has led to supernatural explanations. Bada Valley is home to several hundred statues and other megaliths, which date back to prehistory. It's clear that this was once a densely populated area, 
but now it's a tiny isolated village, which is unknown even to the majority of Indonesian natives. The giant statues are vaguely humanoid, but without inscriptions to accompany them, we have no idea whether they're intended to represent gods or people. Bizarrely, nobody has taken the time to date the site accurately. So theories range from it being a thousand years old to being closer to 5,000. The villagers are quite used to the statues, using the land around them for farming, and many have their own stories about how they came to be there. Some say that they're criminals, turned to stone as punishment. Others say that they're imbued with magical powers and ward evil spirits away from the land. If any nation in the world were ever likely to play host to a range of stone-carved bulls, then it would have to be Spain, famous for its bullfighting traditions. There's a little debate about whether the bulls of Guisando, which can be found in Avia, are really bulls at all. Some archaeologists think they were intended to be pigs instead, although the holes in the sides of their heads suggest that they once had horns. There are four of the sculptures, which form part of a larger set of granite animals known as veracos, which can be found all over Spain and were likely carved by the Vetan tribe just over 2,200 years ago. They've been there for so long that Roman soldiers have carved ancient graffiti into the side of some of them, leading to questions about whether the Romans also moved them into their current position. For once, it's thought that there was no ceremonial purpose to the carving of the bulls. They're just decorative objects, and may once have stood at the entrance to an impressive ancient building. There's a specific and unique form of megaliths which can only be found on Menorca and Majorca, and they're called taliats. Dating back somewhere between 3 and 4,000 years, the precise purpose of the 274 megaliths is unknown. All of them are close to known Taliotic settlements, and we can say with a degree of certainty that at least some of them had strategic military importance. They're built in a manner to withstand attack, and so they might have formed a primitive defense network with the other stones. If we believe that to be true, then it only takes a short leap of imagination to see the other stones as defense towers or lookout posts. There's a problem with this theory, though. If the sites had military importance and were used in battle, we would generally expect to see several burial sites or graves close to the stones. Around the Taliots, we're yet to find any. If you can explain how the incredible Temple of Jupiter in Baalbek, Lebanon was built, please leave us an answer in the comments and look forward to your new career as an architectural genius. At Baalbek, we can find the single largest carved block of granite in history. Nobody's managed to break that record for at least 9,000 years. It's so old that some even think that the Temple of Jupiter was built on top of it, rather than being an intentional part of the design. The quarry the stone was drawn from is close to the temple, but there are no visible means of moving the huge stone uphill from one place to the other using the technology that was available at the time. Its total weight is over 1,000 tons, and even then it's only a baby compared to the south stone, which was left back in the quarry unfinished. That one weighs in excess of 1,600 tons. The level of craftsmanship that went into making the stones is almost unimaginable and remains totally unexplained. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!